first one. So, good morning to all y'all. Um, as y'all know, this consistent progress is our Zoom meetings that we do in the morning. It's our fourth one. Um, we just trying to create a positive vibe and energy for everybody, network, influence, motivate. Kevin, um, some of y'all know him. He is leading this and consistent progress basically to create a platform for hosting this event that he's doing. He wanted to do a morning rise challenge, basically, of just creating positive energy to start the day off and get going the right direction, similar to um, how successful people do in the business world, millionaires, any people that you could think of. Usually for when you try to emulate what they're doing, they get up early in the morning, how they get their day started, and they get on their grind. And it's a routine that they do, whether it's Monday through Friday, if, even if they go on do it on Saturdays and Sundays. But usually those people that are sleeping in, they're not they're not really hungry as much as the ones who are waking up early in the morning getting in. They wake up early in the morning and get in with a purpose, and it shows by the results that they're gaining, whether they got a lot of money that's flowing in or just their um, overall happiness, their internal peace. All that plays in the factor by that mentality of them being dedicated to what they're trying to do and accomplish in their life. So uh, I appreciate y'all for supporting Persistent Progress and Kevin and this is fourth video. He got some. He got some fire for y'all today, um, and I mean, I can't wait to be a part of it. So definitely, for anybody, um, feel free to interact because this is not just an event for Kevin just to solely host and be a lecture. You know what I mean? If y'all prefer just to, you know, type y'all questions or answers in on the chat, y'all uh, speak out vocally, then you know you can do that as well. Or sometimes I usually just raise my hand because Kevin be on the roll of talking, and then he'll get to me whenever. So however y'all choose to do it, feel free. Uh, this is this is an open group that it's kind of private for people like us that we're on this same mindset for this platform. So it's not just open to everyone, but um, definitely reach out to invite people in if you feel that this is something that they need or to be a part of because you know they can either bring something to add on to this group and and help out, or they can be also be receiving or taken away from it. Everybody in this group, I put this uh, group together with a bunch of different people because we all got different career backgrounds. So now we're able to network in here and see how we can communicate with each other and help one another out. That was one of the things that we did in one of the last Zoom meetings is that we let everybody know which different career fields we're in, which type of expertise that we have, how we can network and help each other out, you know, and explore different options if we're looking to grow or expand. So definitely feel free to do that network with each other even outside on uh, in the facebook group and so forth and you know just be open to expand in any way possible and just you know do your thing feel open all right kev take off man well good morning good morning everybody how's everybody doing how's everybody feeling it's 12 in here that's what i like to see you know <clears throat> um you know, this is kind of piggybacking off that, you know, the first time I, I did this call, uh, I didn't really know, I didn't know anybody, right? I knew some people, uh, but realistically, I didn't know a lot of people. And now it's just more of, you know, I like to see that persistent progress, right? So I, I just want to see people always trying to get better, always trying to learn, and always wanting to learn, having that hunger. So the biggest mm -hmm. thing that I do each and every single day is I have a team that I specifically teach the trading. And... You know, I try to network and try to get people to really understand those different things. So it's really kind of cool to know that I can uh, be someone that benefits from it as well, but also seeing other people succeed. Uh, Alicia, I, she actually, me and Harry, we actually have a, a workshop tonight where she is actually going to motivate and kind of like do a helpful healing and cleansing for my uh, my group, just because trading in itself can be very stressful. So. Uh, one of the big things about trading is people, a lot of people in trading don't understand what financial literacy is. And for me, it's, I, I want to be able to get people to understand what that stuff is. I'm a big math guy. I love everything about math. So uh, I created this whole little document here uh, in November. Like you can tell right there that this is exactly how you start to understand what financial literacy is. So if you are a person that wants to be financially stable and financially free and just really kind of understanding what, you know, how to get there, you know, start to follow these different things. 
Okay, so first steps. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So what is financial literacy? Financial literacy is the ability to understand how money works, how someone makes it, manages, invests it, and it also expands it. So for example, donating to charity, <clears throat> making their own business, whatever it may be. In-depth knowledge of financial literacy is required to understand how, mo how money works and how it can work for you, even when you're sleeping, meaning affiliate marketing, passive income, whatever it may be. So they, a lot of these people, they kind of invest in profitable areas like stock, the stock market and the money market to understand how it works. So Forex trading, uh, binary, uh, the actual stock market, uh, options trading, whatever it may be, they it makes money while you're asleep. To understand how it works, it's important to understand the common financial literacy principles as financial goals, budgeting, <coughs> investments, uh, contracts, and employment models. So the question is, how does someone who has a bare based understanding of financial literacy become financially literate? Well, follow these steps, right? So the first step is committing to change. So if you don't have a pen, pad, paper, whatever it may be, you know, get it out because it's going to be really, really important for you to kind of take these steps. One, commit to change. Log to all your accounts, write down all your expenses. Now give a prediction of how much you make monthly compared to these expenses. And then weigh the expenses from the most important to the least important. Talk about your credit card. Talk about everything that you have to pay off. Everything. Write out, out, out everything. Finally, now ask the question to yourself, are you ready to accept the responsibility for changing your financial situation? If you're not where you want to be financially, are you ready to accept that change? Two, do you believe that you can change and will change the way that you make your financial decisions? Meaning, instead of going out all the time, maybe doing that extra effort of cooking at home, maybe doing that extra effort going shopping and buying bulk, Instead of going uh, out drinking with friends, instead of spending that money on that bottle of booze, maybe saving it and putting it aside to add to your account that you can specifically eventually do compound interesting. Now, what people don't understand about that is if you start today, for example, in 20 years from now, a compound interest account, you your account from if you put $50 a day, so that's $350 a week, you will have roughly over $100,000 in the next five years. And then compound interest in the next five years, that will increase that account to roughly over $200,000. And then if you do it consistently more, and case this is keep adding it, think about it this way, that's $200,000 where you're making $100,000 interest <clears throat> to then also adding another $200,000 in there. So you're making $500,000, which then means that you're going to make roughly close to in about 15 years, a million dollars from just you saving. Because the money used to that percentage is very, very cool. So who in here would like to have a million dollars in their account? <laughs> Yeah, I think anybody would like to have a million dollars in their account, right? What's up, Kay? Are you, are you raising your hand to answer the question? Or are you, are you, uh, all right. <laughs> All right, so then the third question is, can you identify at least one benefit you hope to gain by changing your money management behavior? So when you talk about money management behavior and everything, you know, how often do you kind of impulse buy, right? When you go to the store, yesterday I went to Walmart, you know how many, I had to be on a goal. I had to I had to go to the store, I had to go buy a basketball, so I wasn't gonna use the gym's basketball and just make sure that, you know, I had a ball so that when I went to the gym, I didn't have to share with anybody. It was my own thing. Do you know how many times that I had to tell myself not to buy other things 
that's a that's a you having the will and the ambition to make sure that you don't do it because what we do is we impulse buy all the time it happens i know it does it sucks but we just don't want to do it all right so once you can identify all these after all these three questions you're gonna go to the next part next part is attain your credit score so go into like credit karma go to experian uh go to equifax go to um <clears throat> any other major credit bureau and just get your free credit score. If you have a loan, most loan places, like they give you your free credit score. So, and they can also help you monitor it. So, and even now Chase, if you have Chase Bank or most of your banks right now, they're actually doing the same thing. They want you to become more financially literate. Now you have to want that for yourself. Okay. Three. Set SMART goals. So SMART goals are A, S is specific. Is your goal specific? Is it broad or is it specific? If it derives from something you really want to accomplish. So if you really want a business, make sure you really put, put out the steps and the systems on how to make it successful. Two, M, measurable. You can measure and you can, or count a SMART goal. How many times can you say that you finally have accomplished these small little things to make your S, your specific goal that you want, successful? A, make sure it's achievable. If you don't have the finances for it right now, right? Think about other things that can get you to the finances to be able to make your specific goal, to make it measurable and to make it achievable. Setting goals within your grasp, as in daily goals, um, setting higher goals was critical. Uh, daily goals and just really just small little tasks that you can kind of check off each and every single day. Um, setting higher goals will really realistically just create more frustration. So that's just kind of where that comes from. And then R, a smart goal is rewarding. Reaching the goal should be a, a reward for your hard work. So if you if you reach this goal, you finally create that LLC, you finally are able to speak in front of 500 people, whatever it may be, you know, these different things, that's specifically you. you. You are specifically wanting to reward yourself. So give yourself a pat on the back, right? Like right now, everybody should be being happy that they're up because they specifically wanted to get up for this, right? Did they want to? No, nah, probably not, but they did. Is it a goal? Yeah, because you want to gain the information. How what have you achieved? You're learning from a, you're learning for information from a person that's still learning more information themselves. And for R, and then the question is, is it rewarding? So that's an answer that's for realistically, that's a question that you can only answer yourself. I just can only provide the only, my own knowledge for this, but start thinking about that in every situ every situation. What is my specific goal when I go to the store? How can I measure it? Is it achievable? How do I reward myself for this? Maybe buying myself a chocolate bar, maybe buying my five 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 dollar football, maybe it's doing whatever it may be. And how do I track it? Which is deep. How do I track it? You know, following these smart goals, doing these each and every single day and every single task that you have increases your thought process helps you build your brain power. And if you build your brain power, you will become more financially literate and start reading a lot more financial literacy books. I mean, I, I literally have a whole list of the books that I've read to get me to where I am, right? <clears throat> Number four, create your desired spending breakdown. So using Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, you can showcase what your spending is like, okay? How much do you like to make? Expenses, what are the bucket list items that you need to finish? What are some things that you're going to spend to? Are there any savings? So realistically, the real sauce comes in the next, next part, but you have to achieve all these previous four parts before you can go into the fifth part, which is the math which is where I love, right? So think about it this way. Your monthly net income, 
subtract your monthly expense equals your rent remaining balance, right? So how much you have for the rest of the, for the rest of the month. So your remaining balance Yeah, so let me let me get through this here real quick, DeAndre, and then I will uh, pull up my list. Yeah. So monthly net income minus monthly expenses equals the remaining balance. Then the remaining balance, what you have is you're going to put 80% into your savings. This is the aggressive way of saving because you want to retire, right? So you want to, let's say you want to retire in 10 years. Well, start saving for it. It doesn't, it's not just given to you, right? You can work all the time. You can work 32 years of your life, whatever it may be. You know, that's what's what it is. Two, so the other remaining balance is you put it into your checking, right? So you're spending money. So really understanding that big difference of where um, that specifically comes. So this is a very simple equation, right? Why do you think it's hard for people to follow this equation? Why do you think it's hard for people to follow the equation? Here. Saving eighty percent is tough, man. It's it is tough. But think about it this way: you struggle now for what you give yourself that future to live for, right? So you struggle now and you put that thing to live for. So I, you, you, know, you all know that I'm a nerd when it comes to like technology and everything, right? Dre, uh, Garland, <laughs> Alicia, you know that now, uh, these people. It's, so this, look, so check this. Let's go through like this whole thing, right? Let's say rent was $800. Let's say you're going to go groceries. You can put $120 here. You can put this here. And then, um, I don't know, books. $80. You know, whatever it may be. This is, yeah, it, it literally breaks down everything for you. And how many times have you been paid for so far? So let's say it's your first, this is your first week. You can put two, <clears throat> everything there. So this is actually tells you how much you have to spend per day. And all this does is, is this, it's actually a tracking thing. So let's say you were on a Monday, you can actually just track everything. You know, this is kind of unique because this kind of is like your own tracking thing that you can have. So I created this in the perspective of helping people understand how to break down their monthly expenses. So you have to do the goal. Well, so your, your goal each and every single day is if you've only just gotten paid, right? You put, you get paid one time. So you should have at least $600 in savings. Assuming that you have a three thousand dollars total totally net income, your total expenses are only a thousand dollars. You're left over after your expenses. You put twelve hundred dollars into your saving. Your actual spending per month, so you have to mean you have four hundred dollars per week, which then means you have twenty eight dollars and fifty seven cents per day. Now, all that math did that just confuse you? Imagine if you had to break this down every single time, right? Look, I will give you this sheet. And you, all you have to do is make sure you stay on top of it so that all you have to do at the beginning of each and every single day 
<clears throat> every month is just come in here and just type to write down what your receipts are. So how often do you people in here actually say, yes, I want my receipt? No, I'm really bad at that. Everybody's bad at that. Not just you, everybody's bad at that. But I, now I've been emailing it, so that helps. Yeah. So <laughs> when you talk about how often people really understand, like this is this is probably the hardest hardest part right so if you're in the facebook group well i'll send this i'll send this sheet out no big deal um yeah so it, it's really cool because you can literally like man i know there's some shoppers out there like people want to have like a an expense <laughs> and i literally like i broke it down for a person i went down and i really broke it down and if you consistently are staying on top of your things, right, it'll tell you your monthly spending right here. So your average spending per day after it, every each and every single thing, it'll break it all down for you over here. And it'll talk to you about how much you're spending per day, how you as a person can actually start to become more frugal, right? Dre, what was the last time you went to a Dollar Tree? Shoot, I stay in the Dollar Tree, bro. I've been there all the time. Thanksgiving supplies was bought in Dollar Tree. So, you know, it's crazy, right? Have you been there for Christmas yet? Um, a, a little bit, but I got, I'll probably be there more now since I got my own house and stuff. But no, not on, not on the Christmas tip. Uh, Christmas? They have so many, like, these super unique gifts, man. You know, it's like you you realize like if you go to the store, think about it this way. How much is a notebook at Walmart? Too much. Easily like three or four dollars. Three or four dollars, right? The same size notebook, the same amount of sheets for a dollar. Maybe mm -hmm. a little bit less quality, right? But mm -hmm. still doing its justice. Now I imagine if you start from, thinking about that uh, every single day. Right What's that? I bought some eggs from Dollar Tree the other day. It's because I wasn't about to go to Walmart and pay extra two dollars for it, and I was already right there. Exactly. So it's like, yes, it's a lower grade, right? Maybe a little bit, but at the end of the day, you're making yourself understand that you don't need these extra luxuries that are coming from coming just going to Walmart. You know, you do these different things to appease your mind, but at the same day. And I learned this from a person that who, who is a millionaire, right? You can't start living that millionaire lifestyle until you have that millionaire money. There's a dude who does a wholesaling. He, he does wholesaling. He, his whole outfit, he, he broke it down. He wore $12 shoes. He wore $27 jeans, $30 shirt, and then drove a like, 2008 Honda Civic. And dude in his account has a million dollars because he's committed to the grind. If you're committed to the grind, that's fine. But he's not spending that money recklessly. He's not. So, th okay. How many people in here have a PS5? No. Uh -uh. Or anything that it costs over, I don't know, $200. makeup, TV, etc. Whatever it may be. You know what I do with my Christmas gifts each year? I ask for a gift receipt. I'm not going to be an <laughs> asshole about it, but I ask for a gift receipt. <laughs> so, Luke, check this out. You spent how much on your does this damn PS5? Total. Games, controller, everything. How much? Let's just, you know what, let's just go PS5. A thousand dollars. Do you know how much a stock of Apple is right now? Do you know how much a stock of Apple is right now? No, I don't. How much? See that? You see that number right there? 
That's a hundred and twenty-eight dollars. So this thousand dollars you just put on this game could have been put into a stock. You know what stocks do? Stocks progress. What does your PS4 do? PS5 do? Depreciate. It depreciates. The moment you buy that five hundred dollar PS5, you got maybe three months to sell it for a higher price. After that, it's gonna lose probably about sixty percent value. Well, not sixty percent, probably like twenty percent value. So you could have won if you don't. If you understand the difference between it's the fact that you could have spent a thousand dollars more wisely, right? I'm not trying to say that you know you don't need to treat yourself, but I'm saying like I'm not spending five hundred dollars on no damn game system. Nope. I'm gonna go buy. I'm either a gonna buy four stock, three stocks of Apple, or b find an option for Apple where I can make even more money than that. So if you want to be rich, if you want to be financially free, if you want to be smart, or start thinking of it like this, right? Think about all this extra money that you have. Like straight up, if you all want to, I will gladly share weekly stock like options and advice for you all if you're committed to the crime. Because I'm committed to the Forex grind, but I also help out with stocks and everything else. So if that's something that you want, right, we can have a whole discussion about what the stock market is and how it's moved and how how things affect it, what affects it, news, whatever it may be. Because at the end of the day, you are the person that wants your wealth, right? If you're telling yourself that, you know what, I can afford to pay for a PS5 with all these damn games then that also tells me that I can afford to invest in my financial future. Oh, yeah, man. Option trading? Bet. I called 15 trades and options in the last two weeks. Only one didn't hit. So people were making some pretty good bread. Uh, Kevin, I have, like, kind of, I don't know if this is random or off topic, but it's something... I want to know. So does uh, Forex, do they have like a 401k for you? So, like the company themselves? Or since you would technically kind of be self-employed? Or how that like? So the thing is that if you, if let's say, uh, if you, let's say you trade, right? You technically create your own 401k in a sense. So you have to, so, okay, this is, this is kind of, it's a complicated process. So you trade, then you make your money, then they tax you your money, but then you create your own 401k because it's all your own retirement plan. So realistically, in the four sense of, as long as you are honest with yourself and you keep a percentage of each of your earnings, then you have to break it down yourself. So you're, you're, you're pretty much creating your, four, your own 401k, but actual options trading itself, no. Now, if you work for like a trading company and stuff like that, yeah, they do. Like, um, I don't know, Webull or Robinhood mm-hmm. or any bank, realistically, they, they offer 401ks because that's pretty much their job. But if you're doing it yourself, like freelancing, no. But you create your own. Okay. Which is a whole different other math equation. It's a very complicated equation. So, <clears throat> Lee, are you going to, well, obviously, I don't know. If you're a true gamer, you probably aren't going to really do this, but are you going to rethink about what you're going to use with your money? Or anybody? Instead of seeing that you see these new shoes, right? Okay, okay. So, what are some shoes that you all like? And how much they cost? No, I stopped spending money on shoes a long time ago. Well, no, no, I'll lie. The most I want to spend on shoes these days is maybe $40, $50, maybe. 
But when I was young, I I would spend like a hundred, two hundred dollars on shoes. Easy. No, nah, not the easy. <laughs> Those are expensive. He said. <laughs> $160 for Nikes when well, you can have one stock of Nike. I'm just saying. Let's just say. Bank of Jordan. Scarlet Eagle as coaches and easy. Hey, Kev. Yo. Um, you you being, uh, I don't know if you're fully self-employed or whatnot, but so you starting your own retirement account. Is that what you did? You create your own 401k? Pretty much, yeah. Um, do, you, do you have a stock portfolio uh, basically – built in hand that you did yourself or are you um solely I'm still just building it. it i'm still building it you still because building. of the fact that there's so many different things that you can do right there's right. so many different things okay you know? so it's like i'm a tech nerd right mm -hmm. you should you're you're a lot more into the healing and the motivational aspect and all those different things think about the brands that you buy stuff from right right how often do you invest in those specific brands? Yeah, I hear you. I, I ask that because uh, I just finished reading this book. I've been posting it a couple of times uh, for on my page and things like that. It's called Unshakable. But basically, um, the advice and things that, that the guy had given me as a life coach, but he had got it from other people that are like uh, successful billionaires like Warren Buffett and Jeff Bezos and all them, and how they were. This uh, book was solely kind of based on building the wealth and not necessarily the the riches um uh, off the quick trading but this is like long game as far as investing or building that stock portfolio and they were talking about how diversifying the uh, your portfolio basically creating that four to one five to one ratio so that say you invest in five different five different things it stretches your money out further that you take less of a risk and more likely of a gain um so, like I said, you put put ten dollars in five different five different stock options, basically not literally stock options, five different stock companies. And if only one of them or two of them fail, and you got three of them that do well, then technically you won, and that loss that you had isn't isn't that bad, isn't you know. So um, I don't know if you knew that or not, or if that was something that you might want to check out because I know that we are young, and you said that you're currently building your stock portfolio, but that might be a book to check out just for some different uh, tricks and trades. Cause I got a, I have a stock portfolio through my job for my uh, 401k. I actually, it's called 457B because I'm a government employee, but now I want to go and compare the company that they have set up for us with our retirement with other uh, independent uh, financial advisors, just to see for what the rates is for how much they're charging me for their service compared to the um the results that i'm actually getting from them advise me on what decisions to make with my money so you do realize the majority of these companies that they have out here that are do these 401ks and stuff like that right are self-made right right so a lot of the things that you're specifically learning are the, the things you're looking at are people who just took a course found a rate and then try to beat their competition. That's really the, that's all it is. So some people like some companies will have the same rate, but their cost to manage your account is extremely less than another company. 
now the other company just has more employees, so that's probably why they have the increased price. But you know, there's there's a lot of different things that you you kind of think about, like with 401k, 457bs, all that stuff. It's just kind of understanding that breakdown. It's a little different. All right, so if you are a person that has a lot of time on your hands, have a lot of time on your hands, become a day trader, I kid you not. If you become a day trader, start learning about day trading and everything, and you actually commit yourself in to, to just learn about day trading for 30 days, I guarantee you, you will flip your account, you'll flip your bank account, you'll flip all this stuff, this stuff in a month. Sometimes a week. Okay. Okay. Um, so I want to get into trading. Um, I just want to know what would be the first, like, because I've been trying to watch, um, youtube videos for trading before i like reach out to you and be so i can like know the terminology um i'm not sure if you know as far as books what would be the top three books i should read hey you thought that you didn't have me no i have them all actually right here for you as well so i have a list that i specifically created so that people could understand i even broke it down into everything right and it's um really understanding that you and your own self have to figure out what type of a trader you are what type of a thought process thinker you are are you patient are you not patient are you willing to kind of do these things look i'm a i'm a patient guy but i'm at the same point a very impatient guy because i like to see money like right away type of guy so um if you have those questions and stuff like that, you realistically reach out to me. We'll set up a one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it may be, so that I can literally spend an hour with you, kind of getting you to understand what the basics of trading are so that you can have it, right? I also have a document that literally has terms that you specifically have, like should know from trading. So, um, you know, just let me know. If you're in stocks, always use trading view and you know like i'm going to show you a quick insight of what i specifically kind of do each day right so for example here let's go to say we, we go to apple right the apple stock we're going to go follow from the nasdaq that's where the tech is and we're going to go through here now once you get really good at this you can kind of start to predict everything that's going to happen so there's another way across. It's not the one. What the... This one. And it has like all my indicators and everything that I specifically need. And I start to mark up everything, right? I start to predict everything. So this move right here, this Apple move right here that happened all the way over here. <clears throat> I called this Monday. People that are in this trade right now, destroying it right now. So it's like, all I did was, I, all, this is all I did. I did, I went to here, I used the Fibonacci retracement tool. And I drew a retracement of what this downtrend is. So this right now, it's an uptrend, right? So I'm, now I'm trying to do, there's a new iPhone's coming. Every year around this time, they put out a phone. Yeah, but see, a lot of this is where the misconception is. What do you think when a person buys, when we buy a new iPhone, what it does to the stock? Oh, uh, it doesn't make it go up. <laughs> you would think so, right? Nope. Why? It's because of the volume. If a hundred thousand people buy it, right? But their prediction was 200,000 people buy it. Mm. They missed prediction by 100,000. So that means that the actual stock itself isn't going to gain anything because they don't, maybe it's not going anywhere. Mm. Right? 
Gotcha. So like, so put this put this to, uh, into an example right here. So you see where this is right now, right? It broke past the 786 right here. The pre-market for it right now is right on top of this 786 line. So the, the price that it ended at yesterday was 128.71. So if this next day right here for this next hour, if this just still breaks up, I'm gonna tell people to buy a short option call for to go for it to go to 129.60, right? If it comes back down, let's say it starts to sell throughout the day, I'm gonna wait the first hour to see if it breaks and creates an MA cross. So a moving average cross. And if it comes down and creates a moving average cross, I'm gonna tell people to put into a short put for it. Meaning for the day, I want you to put, invest your probably put like 150 into it, right? And then come back and you're gonna say, you know, it's gonna come down. Now at the end of the day, if it comes down to the price, specifically the price that you want, like a price break point, you have made your 150 back plus and it's some additional funds because that's how options trading works. Options trading is something that you can buy, buy 100 different contracts for a shorter price, but also the potential of multiplying and amplifying how much you make in the specific market itself. Now, obviously the market's not moving right now because the stock market is closed, but this is how I start to predict these moves. I can literally be like, you know what? If it breaks down here, creates this cross, I'm gonna actually wait. I'm gonna wait until it comes down here. Now it comes to this issue moving cloud. I'm gonna say I'm gonna put a buy limit right up here at 127.06, right? I would say I'm gonna put a buy limit, mainly because this is where I think it's a big, 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 big rejection area. So that 0 .0, that 0.5 right here is at 126.82, which then means, well, okay, there's more terms that we use and everything, but this is a quick rundown. It's 0.5 to 6.18 is that's called the golden zone. So if it rejects off of this, this is a perfect sniper entry for you to continue this buy. So you'll be you'll be putting a call option here, you'll be riding it all the way up to here, and you'll be making a lot of money. Very simple. Now, did that confuse anybody? Because I feel like it did. Uh, so did you trade? Mr. Asante, you trade, bro? Let me know. No, seriously, dude, uh, connect with me. I uh, I actually run in a run a group. It's called the Exchange Academy, and I literally have um, I like have everything in there. Hey, Kevin, I got a question. Yes, sir. Um, with with the Exchange Academy that you run in your group, um. How much money or how much capital do you advise for someone to have that they are able to learn as a newbie, as a beginner and start trading and uh, getting involved with the market and stuff like that? Because I know like as you as you first start off, there might be some rougher times, but, you know, you you stay with it and it'll get better. But how much money do you think or you advise someone starting off that they will be comfortable sticking into it and not once they uh take a loss from investing in a company that didn't do as projected that they'll stay in it like you know what i mean and just they'll keep going and keep doing sticking to the process you know because like you have a certain amount of money you put in and then you scared to lose it and actually you know you just jump all the way out together and you can't stay committed to it like what, what do you think that you need like uh, five hundred dollars in your in your pocket that you can be like okay, we're gonna jump in here with the um, with Kevin's group and everything's gonna be good. It's gonna be you know roller coaster ride, but we're gonna stay keep climbing. Where you know where so you think? one of the biggest things that we do in our in the academy is we we teach people the basics of trading, right? So we create the we create that demo account for them, and then I give you access to this specific drive here. It's called Trading One Hundred One with Strategies, right? I've put. This is at least like at least an hour on each one of these videos. So you have to do six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 hours of video footage of just strategies that we use. And then also talking about the basics of trading so that you can, the people who are coming into this can actually try to figure out what type of trading style they specifically like. Right. And then I also have added on to keep, continue to add on to it, creating the mindset to become successful, how to determine your time, uh, your trading, um, your mental focus to rewire, uh, 
trading view sniper strategies, all these other different strategies that I have, it shows that, that people can understand that you can start with anything. And you can start with anything. I had a person actually that started this week, right? She started this week with $20. Her account is now up to $410 in four days of trading. All she did was be very, very disciplined and just follow the trades and then also ask questions. So, okay, like if you have questions about when do I when I set up free trades and stuff like that, like ask questions. I'm I'm here to help you all understand what that is, right? And I'm here to help people understand life a little bit better. So it's like when a person says, Oh, my trade hit stop loss, and then it's confused about it, I'm like, well. Trades do hit stop loss. I'm not, you're, you're not going to get 100% accuracy out of anyone. But the fact is you should have more wins than you do losses. You shouldn't be trading with your emotion. You should be trading with your brain. If you trade with your brain, you'll never lose that much. Right? So my group is specifically, I actually have a website as well. It's called the exchangeacademy.org. And it has its own website and everything. Uh, you can contact me, contact us, whatever it may be. Talks about what we use, how it's possible, the different like teas that we have. Um, we are called the Exchange Academy because we like to exchange information with, with each other. Um, we have our three E's, which are the Elevate, Educate, Exchange. These different things that we do specifically to help people out. <clears throat> Uh, my accuracy percentage is roughly around 94%. So for every 9.4 trades, I hit a stop loss. This week, I'm probably closer to like 96. And we trade everything, right? So we trade. So it's funny because, you know, a lot of people ask me, what do we trade? We trade currency pairs. We trade indices. We trade stocks. We trade um Hey, we traded Tesla the other day. We trade Bitcoin. We trade XRP. We trade uh, the Mexican peso, the euro, the the ruble, the Russian ruble. I mean, we trade anything and everything that you can think of. And the coolest part about it is actually there's actually this new thing that's called pocket options. And a lot of people have been doing it all the time, right? It's it's called binary, right? Binary in itself is a very interesting concept because if you think about it this way, so my demo is at a thousand, right? So let's say we change the time here to 30 seconds. I like, don't like where it is right now, but so say that, I don't know, I put a hundred dollars here, okay? I'm gonna probably say that it's gonna continue, maybe it continue to buy. So I have all my indicated, I don't like that one. Let me go to there. And this is, I'm just giving you an insight of what I specifically do each day, right? So, um, <clears throat> nope. All right, so gold here, I'm going to buy right there. Boom. So it's like, now I'm waiting 30 seconds to make sure it clears a specific strike point, right? You got kind of better than the cheese so much. Money. Yeah, I mean, realistically, everybody can invest in however much they want, right? I mean, it just kind of it depends on you. Um, personally, I like to make sure why they literally came back on me in the last second. That's crazy. So you see how that happened right there? So my first gold trade, it broke even, right? So it didn't mean it, it really didn't do anything. So this next 30 second, I kind of got aggressive. And I kind of went down. So it's, a, it, I mean, this in itself is, this is a quick, oh, actually it's coming down. Is understanding that like the things that you specifically do as a trader, I mean, you should start just to kind of like understand like everything that you kind of put into trading um this is some this is a new thing that i'm still learning obviously i don't know how to do pocket options binary trading but i do a lot of just regular forex trading itself so 
I guarantee you, watch Apple Apple price today. If it breaks up above one thirty, it's gonna keep going. Um, but yeah, no, I I specifically teach people whatever they need to be taught. Um, they choose how much they want to invest. So that's it's fifty dollars. I create a trading plan for them specifically for fifty dollars, and uh, you know how much the uh. How do we get there? How do we build your account? Whatever it may be, key points and levels, um, just kind of those different things that we kind of do. Does anybody have any questions? This is like a good time to really just ask me anything. I don't, I don't care, life, whatever it may be. Just a quick insight for UK. So this is a document I call it, how to determine your trading plan, right? So I broke it down into the three different types of traders. Someone who likes to hold trades, which are called swing traders. Trading B is the person who likes to get in and out. That's me, realistically. And then C is someone who likes to get into every single trade, which is also me, because I'm a nerd. So <laughs> I personal all three, but at, least, but at least like the A traders. So I'm not really a person who likes to hold. So, what is trader A? They will follow a safe trading plan. Typically, the B will follow the aggressive trading plan because they're trying to make money quick. And then C is will follow both depending on their account size, right? So what is the safe trading plan? I break it everything down for you. The aggressive trading plan, I break everything down for you. I break it all down here for you. And I do even do a breakdown of like how much you raise. So let's say you started with $100. You adjust your lot size each day, for example, assuming you only secure five pip trades. So you do $100 for five pip trades, which is the percentage of, a, of the actual pipette. And say that's, you know, it's 50 cents for one trade. So for five trades, you make 250. In five days, you make 1250. So at the end of your week one, you make $12.50, right? So week two, then you have, you're making 50 cents. Still, because of the fact that you're not over a threshold yet that I want you to be over. So this is the safe way of doing it. So by the end of week two, you have a full month that you're specifically due to, right? You're not Forex funded yet, but we'll take two months realistically following the safe trading plan that once you start to invest in this, you start to learn your own like craft such. Uh, if you can't monitor as much, I would say go with the safe trading plan. And then I would you be trader A. That's the person that who likes to hold trades. So I do call those. Um, I call swing trades all the time, um, especially when I do like a chart analysis and everything. Especially hop on those calls because those are those are huge. Those are easy. Um, and then we just talk about you know what the um, the uh, future looks like. Hey, go, hey, sir. Um, so for trader like B and C, you consider those uh day traders? Yep. Uh with day traders, is it don't you need or I'm sorry, for stock options, I was under the impression that for uh, to be a day trader on like I have TD Ameritrade, uh, that basically you can make three day trades a week. If you try to do more, they won't allow you because they want you to have twenty five thousand dollars in uh in your account with them. To do that, is that something that's the same for Forex or? So it's it's because it's discipline, right? They want you to be disciplined in specifically three different, three trade options that you have. So <clears throat> so full reason behind it is because a lot of people that start to trade aggressively, they're trying to protect you. That's all that they're trying to do. People who like to trade options and everything. And so you make money on all of your three options, right? Well, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there's roughly about 70, 70 or so percent of other people that don't make money off those options, right? So the people that do make money off those options, you know, they, they're telling you, kudos, good job, you did it. But they're trying to protect the people that don't make the money off of those options. So once you get up above that specific level, let's say like, you know, 25,000, then yeah, you can trade whatever you want. But they're just doing it to try to get you into the trader's mentality, where that means that you don't have to enter every single option straight. So regardless, <laughs> if you don't have... 25k the most likely you start off as being a, a trader a 
and you can work your way up because I mean, swing trading, you can work your way up to basically have enough capital that you're B so, and C. So yes or no, right? So swing day trading is specifically one day. So let's say you put an options trading that's going to last till January of 2022. Well, in January, 2022, you've already created your three in just one day, right? Let's say you put three options trades in one day. That means tomorrow, the next day, you can put three different trading options in the one day. So as long as you do three different things each day, or you can even reinvest in the same option, it doesn't matter. You you have three each day. So you have three on Monday, you have three on Tuesday. So you have 21 options that you can realistically create in a week. Well, 15, because the stock market's not open on the weekend. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it did. Uh, okay, seriously, message me on Telegram. Let me know. I got you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, anybody else have any other questions? We kind of like veered off and to focusing on what I really do, but yeah. If not, we're going to go to step six, which is always, 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 always keep moving forward. Do not limit yourself to just these three goals. Once you reach these three goals, set a newer and better ones so that you can create, continue to grow. You invest, you increase your rates, you invest again, you reach more of your own rates so that you eventually become that millionaire that you, you desire to be. If you want to become a millionaire, go become a millionaire. Don't stop it. Nothing stop it. The only things that are stopping us is us. What is still important and beneficial, Asante? What you talk about, what is... Oh, yeah, it is. So when I get off of this call, what do you guys think I'm going to be doing, right? Do you think I'm just going to go back to bed? Hell no, I'm not. Because <laughs> it's the whole point of us getting up this early is to, to get goals accomplished and get these little things accomplished. So <laughs> realistically, you need to get up. Once you get out of this bed, go accomplish everything that you need to get accomplished for the day before you get back into this bed, before you go sit on the couch. Before you do everything, get into your car, drive somewhere, because the moment that you start to get in your car, your brain starts to process. I'm like, all right, what else do I need to get done today? So understand that, you know, once you, once we leave this call, start to take that step, just take that step into, <clears throat> even if that's A, to reach out to me, B, um, you know, really understanding like what's <clears throat> uh, reaching out to other people that are in this group whatever it may be. Asante, reach out to me, dude. Like, seriously, well, we'll set up a one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe we'll set up a two-on-one -on -one with you and Kay, and then we can kind of talk about you know, trading. Um, Jerry, set up a reading group, whatever it may be, so that people can start to read Unshakable with you. Actually, who would be interested in a book club? The Rati is um, launching a book club January 2021. So... You guys can add me on Instagram, Alicia F. Kanyas. I'll put that in the chat. I'm going to be doing that this year. Low, low key book club down. Alicia, connect with me. Because. You want, yeah, for sure. Because uh, we got ways for you to be profitable in your book club as well sounds good great cool all right john we've been on for an hour so go do great things go become great go be awesome and i know that you will so that's all i got for the day <laughs>